Thank you all for joining us for this week's lunchtime chat with Clink and Hyde. We're here today to share some information on the Indigenous Guardians Network. Uh, my name is Chakya Ish, uh, Richard Peterson, and I serve as the president of Clinkett and Haida. Uh, we have these lunchtime chats so that we can reach our tribal citizens and, and fill everybody in on a lot of the happenings here at Clinkett and Haida, educate on some of our programs. Uh, this week, I'm really excited to talk about uh, the Indigenous Guardians Network, which is a partnership with Sea Alaska, Clinkett and Haida, and some of our other tribes and corporations in the regions. Uh, we partner with the Sustainable Southeast Partnership. So uh, if I can, I'll start with Joe, if you'd uh, introduce yourself. Thank you, President Peterson. Kahuku is my clinking name. I'm a Tequidea Brown Bear from Yakutat, child of the Kwashkaquan, and chairman of the board at Sea Alaska. Also serve on the board for uh, Spruce Roots and help out where I can with Sustainable Southeast Partnership. Great. Thank you, Joe. Ralph? Good afternoon. I'm Ralph Wolf. I'm the program director for the Sustainable Southeast Partnership. I'm just uh, happy. I also serve as sixth vice president for Clinkett and Haida and just excited to see all the good stuff happening with the Guardians Network and SSP and Clinkett and Haida. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Mike? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Mike Goldstein here. I'm with the U.S. Forest Service. I uh, serve as the regional planner and the inventory monitoring coordinator. And I've been fortunate enough to be serving as program lead uh, for the last uh, while as the Guardians Network got started up. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Mike. Oh. Hey, good afternoon. My name's Andine. My American name is Jennifer Hanlon. Uh, first and foremost, I am Tegwiti Eagle Brown Bear from Yakutat, daughter of the Lichnachari. I am the Tribal Relations Specialist for the Tongass National Forest. And prior to this appointment, I worked as the Environmental Director for the Yakutat Klinka Tribe. And before that, I was with the Clinkett and Haida as a Natural Resource Specialist. So, Gunachish, uh, yield back to you, President Peterson. Thank you, Ray. Good afternoon. <clears throat> my Klinkett name is Kusatan. Uh, my English name is Raymond Paddock. I am the Environmental Coordinator for the Central Council Clinkett and Haida in the Native Lands and Resources Department. I am a Kaguantan of the Eagle's Nest House. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Marco? Thank you, President Peterson. I'm excited to be here. My name is Marco Banda. I am the Regional Resource Specialist here at uh, Central Council Clinkett and Haida and a helping hand on the building this Indigenous Guardians Network. Thanks for having me in. Thanks, Elizabeth. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Thomas. I am the Natural Resource Coordinator at Clinton and Haida Central Council, and I'm happy to be here today. All right, thank you. Well, great. Uh, just to give a little bit of background on today's discussion, Back in 2020, Clinkett Haida and the U.S. Forest Service signed a memorandum of agreement supporting the creation of an indigenous guardian program for Southeast Alaska. What's important about this agreement is that it recognizes the critical role and inherent sovereignty of tribes in all aspects of stewardship of our homelands and waters and the importance of a co-management governance structure. So that leads us to where we are today. Um, for those of you who may have not have already heard about the Indigenous Guardians Network, can you provide a brief overview on what it is and the work that is uh, being done? And I'll just open it up to, you know, I don't know who wants to start. Maybe Mike, do you want to tackle that? Yeah, I could just give a little a, a brief premise here. We joined uh, forces with um, Central Council of Clinkett Haida to form this Indigenous Guardians Network in you know every sense of the word to share stewardship and to heal and to restore trust um, and you know our goal was just to really figure out ways that we could you know bring our efforts together um, and, and work more appropriately. 
So I'll pass it on, maybe Marco. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, um, in a nutshell, uh, the Indigenous Guardians Network uh, is a collaboration of Southeast Alaskan tribes, organizations, um, community members. Um, and, and what we do is we help to empower tribal citizens um, who have been practicing environmental stewardship using traditional knowledge. Um, and we accomplish this through a few different ways, um, funding support being one of them, um, relationship building, as Mike had mentioned, and indigenous led uh, education. Um, so our, our, you know, our purpose is to, is to support the Alaska native communities and tribes through supporting their traditional knowledge and sustainable ways of, of life to monitor, protect, restore, and of course, manage uh, your homelands and waters. Well, uh, you know, the Guardians was really kicked off with uh, Clink and Haida and the Forest Service coming together. And, uh, but we really wanted it to encompass all of Southeast and for all Alaska Native tribal citizens. I'd, I'd really like to hear maybe from Ralph and Joe just kind of more of a regional aspect to that and what that means bringing in different partners. Thanks, President Peterson. I think I think the the regional aspect of the Guardians Network is um, a couple fold. I think we're looking at bringing our power as a people together, bringing our data as a people together, bringing our um, traditional knowledge together from the whole area uh, is really like guiding the way and, and, and really hope that we can look at this network as a tool to use to help build our protection, our preserving, our management, and our restoration of all of these um, traditional harvests that we use as a people. I think uh, those are those are really important to us, and I think utilizing the whole region and and everybody working together and sharing data and sharing sharing aspects will really help build this out and really get us a long way in in work working with and uh, helping to restore management back to the people who it belongs to. Hey, Joe. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the couple things I'll note, I guess, is what, what one is. Um, Folks can probably Google this if they haven't already and the Indigenous Guardians Network, the, the, the concept, it's out there, it'll, it'll pop up and the First Nations in BC and Haida Gwaii were really leaders in this effort uh, some years ago. And, you know, their, their villages and their, their communities are similar to ours and it really represents a, uh, a powerful mindset shift, a paradigm shift. Uh, and uh, from with the Sea Alaska hat, you know, I think we were all pleasantly surprised when when Clinton and Hyatt and the Forest Service signed this agreement. And we'd been working with each of you before that on many different realms. Uh, but when this happened, it's like, okay, you know, things are aligning. Uh, it's time to go to work. We were getting uh, some momentum here. Let's get behind this uh, and make it happen. And uh, the, the paradigm shift is really going to help us uh, look at the whole Tongass from a different lens, uh, a lens that reaches back, you know, 10,000 years. And uh, rather than just being, feeling like an outsider on our own lands, now we're really um, poised to step forward and um, build something that is uh, more enduring and, and meaningful because we're not, we're not purely extraction based. We're not purely conservationists in the Western sense. We're just, we've always been here. We're always gonna be here. So there's a lot of common sense in this type of thing. And where we're, um, we know that the, each of the villages have their own things going on. Every one of our communities is unique. Um, and as a regional entity, you know, we're, we're, we're there, the counterparts to Clink and Haida. And we just always feel like we need to be in lockstep uh, uh, empowering our communities. And this, this year to me is just a hugely exciting moment to, to embrace um, and to get our next generation of our workforce excited to be on the land, taking care of um, our communities. Yeah, that's something I really agree with you on, Joe, is, you know, we don't fit into some of the def Western definitions of how things are. Um, you know, we trace our lineage back over 10,000 years. We're going to trace it for 10,000 more. 
And so conservation, resource extraction, we view those a little different than everybody else. And this is a way for us, I think, to be more engaged and, and really not just engaged, but actually leading the, the work and the conversations. So it, it's kind of been a dream come true for me. I want to turn over to Mike and Ray, and maybe you guys can talk a little bit about how the memorandum of agreement between Clink and Haida and the Forest Service support the Indigenous Guardians Network. Yeah, thank you, President Peterson. Um, you know, we do work under different types and uh, vehicles of agreements. And um, so we pulled this agreement together in order to like establish this network um, and give it some legs. And our hope was that, you know, through that other partners would join forces um, and come together on that. And that's what has actually happened. But we're looking at, um, you know, ways to catalyze programs and bring, um, kind of bring forward some of the successes that we've jointly had together, like in HUNA, uh, Native Forest Partnership and the Kikwan, similar partnerships, and, and take a hard look and bring that out to more and more communities as possible, as ways that we can steward the lands together. So I'll pass back to you, Ray. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, President Peterson. Uh, yeah, just to add to that, I feel this is um, somewhat of a really progressive, somewhat revolutionary agreement. Um, much of the work that I've done has been on soft money, meaning grant agreements and, and working through that. But this agreement was different in regards to it, the approach to it. Um, we were able to essentially kind of build the agreement as we go. So typically you have an agreement that says we're gonna do this and we'll check it off and it's done. But as we're as as the phase and the years goes by, uh, we're allowed to actually essentially kind of build on the agreement to help us meet the needs of this guardians program. So it's somewhat of a revolutionary and, and progressive agreement, and really excited to be a part of it. You know, all of us have been so dedicated to the development of the Indigenous Guardians Network. I'm kind of before we really dive in, perhaps, uh, you know, you can all share your own personal perspective on what stewardship means to you and why this work is important. I'll uh, start with Ralph. Thank you. I think as as stewards of the land and and water and and habit have. Um, people of the place, I think a part that's been instilled in us is, is the protection of those places and things. And I think part of that is the deep connection that we have as an indigenous people to the area, to the land, to the people around us. And I really think that that, that portion of the stewardship needs to come back to us being able to turn that to direct government action as well. Um, not no more of us just saying this is how we feel about this. This is us making the decisions, and I think that's where um, this definition is going to change through the work of this network. Jennifer, you you've been uh, kind of all aspects between working for Clink and Haida and Yakutat Tribe, and now for the Forest Service. What what is your Yeah, when it comes to stewardship, for me, that is just a very conscious, conscious, excuse me, conscious approach for managing lands, waters, and resources in honor of those before us and for the benefit of current and future generations. And part of stewardship is being able to take care of ourselves and really nurture the elders that we are to become. And that is really based upon taking good care of the lands and waters that have nourished our community, community since time immemorial. So it's really driven by our traditional values and our traditional knowledge based upon respect, balance, and acknowledging that we are all part of a broader community. And so, you know, I've had the great opportunity to put these values into action during my work at the Yakutat Klinka Tribe, as well as Klinka and Haida. And it's really been a great opportunity to 
do work that's prioritized on the needs of the local community for the benefit of that community and to really set the stage for um, informing adaptation planning or to inform land management decisions. So I definitely carry this perspective with me into my role as a tribal relations specialist for the Tongass National Forest. And, you know, our agency, the US Forest Service has a motto to take care of the land and serve people. So it's definitely a prime opportunity to continue to do this kind of work by supporting the indigenous guardians to promote uh, shared stewardship and co-management opportunities. Uh, I'll yield back to you. Thank you. Marco? Thank you, President Peterson. Uh, for me personally, uh, when I think of, it, of, of stewardship of the land, I, I think about um, the use of senses. And what I mean by that is, you know, the observation, the taking the time to listen and also taking the time to reflect. When I'm out there, I can hear, you know, my grandfather's voice telling me, you know, different things and, and, and how to do things and, and, and what I should be looking for and listening for. So I feel like um, the more that we dive into this work and the deeper that we get into it, uh, me on a personal level, it really opens up uh, those senses to me. And, and all in all, I think the, the ultimate outcome of this is, is you know, healing both at the individual level and, and, and in greater. Great, Joe? Yeah, when Indigenous guardians are front and center and really um, driving this. I, I feel like we're going to get to the spot of just thriving and being us rather than always feeling like we're uh, in a fight uh, and, and just trying to protect our way of life. Um, we, we know that our, our way of life is going to be front and center and that's the way it should be uh, rather than um, being stuck in a real competitive framework here, um, fighting off the commercial and sport and all these other interests, uh, the indigenous guardians, because because we're not going anywhere, so we got an advantage in the sense we're not going anywhere. We're here, uh, and everybody's always known this idea of take care of the land, take care of the water, it'll take care of you. Well, let's let's keep doing more of it then. Uh, so a lot of awesome common sense to to come out of this framework. You know. Uh, Elizabeth, you're brand new to the Native Lands and Resources Department, but you've grown up uh, in Juneau and you have ties to Prince of Wales. What's your perspective on stewardship? Um, so, yeah, I was just recently hired on just about a month ago. And in that time, <laughs> it's been uh, exciting, to say the least, um, with all the new uh, programs coming through the Forest Service and in particular Indigenous Guardians. And learning about the program, it makes me, um, it reflects um, and it kind of, to me, it's kind of like taking something that we've experienced as like a culture and, um, and directing it towards an like a way we want to go and thinking differently, thinking outside of the box. And, um, and I think that's the biggest uh, thing. It's just, how can we, how can we create um, a future um, together? And I, uh, it's just incredible to see the collaboration. Great, thank you. Uh, Mike, you, you're kind of from the government standpoint, you know, the, the kind of um, alone on that side, but, you know, we've really enjoyed working with you, and I know you really believe in this work, so do you want to give your idea of what stewardship is? Thank you. Um, I have also very much enjoyed working with all of you in this process and building this program from the ground up. Um, you know, caring for the land and serving people, that's the Forest Service motto. And I don't know that we've always done that. Um, and, uh, and that's fair, but we are doing our best and building, building things day in and day out so that we can 
approach stewardship uh, in a joint fashion, or I might say the careful and responsibility, uh, careful and responsible management of resources. And those resources could be, as others have said just before, you know, how each of us are feeling or community health or um, environmental contaminants or uh, timber in the land base. And it could be paralytic shellfish poisoning and what that means and how guardians could be out in the different communities helping not only observe and detect, but actually through that monitoring program, bring information forward. And we just seen a kind of a, kind of a disparate approach and guardians here from a stewardship perspective is about bringing that together, um, hopefully under a, a single or a few umbrellas, fewer umbrellas than there are. I yield that back. Ray, you've been a part of uh, this work uh, pretty much your whole adult life, right? I mean, what's, what's your views? Thank you, President Peterson. Um, <clears throat> Uh, my views are very similar to what the rest of the panelists are saying in regards to stewardship. Um, I, I, you know, this is something that many of us as traditional people have been growing up with through our elders, bestowing that that aspect of stewardship onto us to to re be respectful to the land, sea, and air. Um, and I, I got to say, though, having this as my job has probably been one of the most amazing things in my life. It's uh, it's hard to say that. It's hard to say for people to say that they love the job that they have, but um, it's something that I, I, I can honestly say that I really love my job as it's something, you know, again, my elders has bestowed upon us to do. Uh, and the most exciting part of it though, too, is, you know, in this progressive relationship we have with the Forest Service and, and hopefully other federal and state agencies is that we are able to implement our traditional knowledge and weave it in and weave it into Western science. And so we're really on um, a new platform that really can allow us to be heard. So there's really exciting times behind this. You, you know, for me personally, I've, I've been involved in a lot of this work, again, like Ray, most of my adult life, uh, coming from Kisan, not having the best history with the Forest Service going back a few generations, right? And now we're in a place where not only have we worked hard to repair a relationship, but the Forest Service as uh, representing the US government, we're, we're in a unique era where we're repairing those relationships and we're talking about stewardship and co-management. And Ray, you talked about the Western science and what's exciting for me is, you know, I've been doing this for about 25 years and we started out talking about our traditional and ecological knowledge and spent so much time trying to even educate Forest Service and other partners what that even meant. And now Western science is substantiating our knowledge. Not that we need it to be recognized or substantiated by anybody, but it sure makes the working relationships a lot easier and being able to take this approach that our knowledge not only matters, but it's um, based on real science itself and and that we're able to work with the Western science to come up with solutions is pretty exciting uh, for me. And, you know, I had alluded to this has been kind of a dream for me and I had worked with folks, other tribes on Prince of Wales, and we had looked at other models, uh, our ties to like Haida Gwaii and, you know, Yukon and what was happening in BC was kind of what we kept saying to the Forest Service 20 years ago, we need to be doing this co-management. And we didn't necessarily have willing partners back then. And now to have those willing partners and to be moving that forward to me is uh, just a dream come true. And I talk about that there are some real success models of co-management for years, we've been inspired by the work of the Coast Funds, the Coastal First Nations, Coastal Stewardship Network, and Indigenous Guardians programs in the First Nation territories uh, on the north coast of British Columbia and Haida Gwaii. Can you all talk about some of these models and how they've helped build the framework for our Indigenous Guardians Network? And um, who wants to tackle that first? 
Joe, you and I were on a mission to BC, and I think it was transformative for both of us. Do you want to yeah. talk about that? Yeah, President Peterson, ha happy to. And the, you know, we'll, we'll put the, the acknowledgement and the thanks out there to, uh, you know, some elements of the conservation community, because we'll, we'll, uh, that, that was part of the impetus there with the Nature Conservancy organizing uh, a gathering down in uh, Vancouver, BC. And it was an accelerator some years ago and uh, a number of different projects, a number of different diverse groups uh, without a, a very super clear picture of what was gonna come out of it. But there was a lot of focus on the issues, the, uh, the needs, the relationship building, and, and then just this, uh, this idea of indigenous leadership, indigenous led conservation was um, something that is, was clearly becoming more of a reality. Uh, and I, I think that was a, a key component to acknowledge because the coast funds in BC, which had, was launched in 2007, $120 million fund, a big portion of that was philanthropy, um, conservation philanthropy. The other portion of that was uh, the provincial government uh, and, and it was part stewardship and part economic development. And we had a lot of the components and relationships here, lots of things happening and they helped us uh, get a little more clarity around uh, some models to use and to move forward on. And through Sea Alaska, our nonprofit Spruce Root was really already involved and in a position to, to step forward and help um, launch this thing. So out of that came a couple of different threads. One was the Guardian's effort. Another one was uh, a healing strand. So there's a group of folks working on the healing uh, initiatives. And then the other one was a fundraising uh, group. And the fundraising side came to be known as the Seacoast Trust. And we've raised up to 20 million now um, there to, to really help fund all this kind of in perpetuity for the long term. So all these different things are not as complex as they need to be when we're working together. Um, you know, it's tough to get your arms around real quickly, but uh, if we're following the lead of people that have been here forever, there's no healthier food in the world than, than the food we, uh, our grandparents grew up with here. And, and uh, there's no healthier lifestyles and living um, really as well uh, when, when we're uh, living our traditional ways. So there's just a lot of uh, upside to all these things coming together. Yeah, absolutely. Ray, do you want to, do you have some examples um, of what some others have been doing that you can share with us? Yeah, sure. Thank you, President Peterson. And and Joe mentioned the, the Guardians Watchmen that, um, and as well as you in, in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, or Sorry, the First Nations in British Columbia, but in Alaska, there's a, um, a Sentinels program that's happening um, uh, in, in the Pribilof Islands area of St. Paul. Uh, essentially, you know, it's there, it's a model in the same regards as the, the Guardians program, the First Nations. Um, but they're a few years ahead of where we are. But um, you know, much of the stuff they're doing right now, again, is, um, you know, the adaptation, adaptation planning, uh, the shared stewardship. Um, and all that for the, uh, you know, protecting heritage and subsistence uh, uh, issues. But they're doing it again on, on a, a co-management level with the, the federal government. Um, there's still a lot of room for, for development. And I'm hoping um, as we develop our piece here in Southeast Alaska, we can find ways of collaborating on a statewide effort. As we know, you know, Alaska is one big state, but we all have the same policies in regards to uh, not having, uh, traditional lands uh, per policy wise of the federal government or the state government. So we essentially are landless, but we all have that same fight and we can collaborate together. There's the best chance of sharing those resources and offsetting costs to, to meet those goals. So exciting time. Great. Ralph, can you talk to us a little bit about the Indigenous Guardians Program and Ca Programs Canada? Sure, <clears throat> and I and I think it's it's great that Joe mentioned them earlier, and and we've uh, done our best to reflect a southeast version of that, and hopefully we get to that point right now as we start building up and moving forward. 
but looking at the Watchman program in in BC um, on the archipelago there, looking at Haida Gwaii where it started in 1981, but um, in the past decade, it's really spread across Canada and we've been able to um, rope in some very uh, knowledgeable folks from that arena from BC and from other areas of Canada that really show a great indigenous active activity, I think is what it's called, activation. Uh, they're really, really knowledgeable about the ways that their people are in the land and they really know how to uh, work with the government. So it's been really cool to see them uh, monitor these priorities, including like sport fishing, commercial fishing, uh, tourism, um, all while looking at through looking at it through an indigenous lens, I think is a perspective that a lot of folks haven't been able to see and hear. And now these folks are actually getting uh, footing and funding from their government to continue to do this job and continue to, to monitor all of these activities and come back with recommendations and um, looking at how they can help manage going forward with, you know, the huge importance of salmon um, and all the different uh, cultural sites that are in in the area. So, you know, they, they get to look at all of these things and bring it into a native perspective and relay that right directly to the government. So I think that's a, a cool program and something we're hoping to mirror here. Great, thank you for that, Ralph. You know, <clears throat> Much of this past year has been dedicated to building the framework of the Indigenous Guardians Network and identifying priorities and future visions that promote shared leadership by our tribes and other Indigenous entities. I'm wondering, you know, Ray and Marco, on the Clinton Haida side, you've been taking uh, a lot of the lead on this. Can you talk about the phased approach to building out the network? Yes, thank you, President Peterson. I'll, I'll let Marco hit that off. Um, he's been the one on the ground um, taking charge on that. Marco? Thanks, Ray. Thanks, President Peterson. Um, yeah, so with, within the, the agreement, we've got um, three areas that we're, that we're working with. Uh, the first one, the first phase uh, would be the building phase, which we're currently in kind of seeping into the second phase of this already. The first phase um, was basically the outreach um, the, was the talking to the folks on the ground, uh, to the guardians that have been doing the work already, um, to tribal environmental departments, um, basically getting the word out and um, coming together with them and meeting them at their table and, and, and saying, hey, we're, we're here to support you. Here's where, you know, let us know where you're at so we can meet you there. Um, that work I believe is gonna continue throughout longevity of, the, of this, you know, of this uh, network um, as it should be. Um, so the second part and the part that we're beginning to, to see really come into fruition here is the implementation of these, uh, of these agreed uh, priority areas, you know, and that's going to be by placing guardians actually on the ground um, and supporting those, like I said before, who have been doing the work already. Um, the final phase, uh, we like to really just kind of look at it as, as a convening phase, you know, any good project, you want to kind of come back, reflect on it, um, gather your partners, um, you know, just kind of getting gathering of the minds, so to speak, to see where we can, um, you know, further network out other partners that can possibly that we possibly may have overlooked and, 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 you know, just going over ways that we can make this network even stronger. And just to add to that really quick, you know, again, uh, in this uh, building phase that we are in right now, and, and Marco mentioned the, the reach out to the tribes, you know, in, in this developmental phase, we're still really early in our uh, building process. You know, I, I'd like in a, in a sense, in a sense to, to crawling and getting to walking, we're starting that walking phase. And in doing so, you know, we're, we're again, we're asking the tribes to be a part of this program to help build this out, to help give their input. So this isn't just a um, uh, one certain group or one certain tribes that's really taking the lead on it. This is a, a program that we want to have transparency and, and collaboration efforts on. So this is still, a, you know, again, this is in the very beginning phases of it. And you know, we, we will be reaching out to the tribes for, for that. 
Great, real quick, uh, Mike and Jennifer on the Forest Service side of that, do you have anything to add? Just add, you know, a couple of things. Thank you for that. You know, we often have five-year agreements, right? And so they're, they're kind of time stamps. And um, life isn't a time stamp. And we also often have agreements because we want to have a one-off. We want to have a certain project done in a certain amount of time in a partnership kind of environment. But this three-phase approach was developed to not be a one-off and to be something that had longevity and legs. And that's why it is taking a little bit longer to get you know, fully up to speed um, because we're building coalitions and we're building trust and we're pulling things together in the right way. We're trying to start looking at ways that we can enhance the work that we've already been doing together while we expand out um, across more tribal communities and tribes. And while that all happened, the Seacoast Trust happened and the Southeast Alaska Sustainability Strategy happened, which are big topics. And we are looking for ways to be all fully well integrated together with all that. And it's the leadership of, of folks you're seeing here, like Joe and Ralph in particular, running those you know, organizations and bringing greater and greater bearing to the work that we're trying to do here. And whether it's climate adaptation work or other efforts in shared stewardship, whether it's um, the heritage and subsistence work that, that we've done both at the forest and regional level. Um, it's, it's just been such a pleasure um, and, it, and, it's, and it's for the long haul. So we're gonna take our time and try and do it right. Um, I'll pass it back, Jennifer, if you have some things to add. Yeah, good exchange. I, I would just add that uh, this is definitely an opportunity for the Forest Service to learn from and, and really work directly from the indigenous peoples that have called the Tongass home since time immemorial. And even without this agreement in place as a federal agency, we still have that obligation to do meaningful consultation with the tribal nations. And we do recognize that that process hasn't always gone as properly as it should. Sometimes it's been more bust than robust. So I do feel like this is gonna be a very uh, prime opportunity for our agency to really enhance that transparency, that relationship building, and to really uh, improve our ability to support the tribal nations and uphold our, you know, our consultation obligations and knowing that it's going to take some time to really rebuild that trust and be able to work together. But I do feel like it's so important because there's so much wisdom and opportunities to be shared to really uh, promote proper shared stewardship and really promote the multiple uses for the various communities that depend on all the resources in this forest. So good Chisha, I'll yield back to you. Thank you. You know, it brings to mind, you know, Mike, it, you touched upon some of the different entities and groups that are doing things right now. And it, it could, you know, we're, we're all kind of living and breathing this work. So it's easy for, maybe it's easy for us to differentiate between those but, you know, between the um, different groups, the work that Sea Alaska is doing, um, Sustainable Southeast Partnership, I, I think I want to really make clear here, while some, some key players are involved with this lunchtime chat today, we really couldn't include everybody uh, for this. And there's so many across the board. And the best part of it is it really... All of it's happening, including the indigenous knowledge. It's all including our tribes and our, and our corporations where they want to be. And the solutions we know are at those local levels. And I think that's what we're here saying is we, we're upholding that. We're trying to help build frameworks where it's really led and the solutions are based at those local levels. I'm just looking at the... Uh, Facebook chat comments and a lot of people are interested in commenting right now about a lot of different things that are concerning. And 
I think the answers aren't all in one program or one thing, but you're seeing such a cross section of the same people, Joe, Ralph, you know, our team, we're, we're on all the, these different entities. So we're really building a framework for the first time that I think is really more all encompassing than it's ever been. It's indigenous led, which really is exciting to me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, maybe asking what are um, some of the, what, what are the priority focus areas for the indigenous guardians network? And I was kind of alluding how there's different entities doing different things. So, you know, I'd be interested, Ray, if maybe you and Marco want to tackle that. Sure. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, as you see on the uh, the PowerPoint here, you know, adaptation planning is definitely one of those shared stewardship. And when we say shared stewardship, that you know, that again, that's that co-management aspect, the co-governance. Um, that we have with the, the Forest Service. And this is something we'd love to see, not just with uh, federal agencies, but with the state of Alaska as well, and municipalities. Um, but other priorities, again, you know, is our heritage, our way of life, and, and our subsistence way of life, and how to implement that, that um, traditional knowledge with Western science. Mark? Yeah, thank you, Ray. Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, these four priority areas of adaptation, planning, shared stewardship, heritage, and subsistence, you know, um, are all backed up by things that collaboratively uh, we put together. For instance, in adaptation planning, um, you know, we have the, the, uh, the, the climate adaptation plan here developed um, uh, here at Central Council. We're using that a lot to kind of make, it, make a, a base for, for how we approach um, areas regionally, because as we know, um, adaptation and, and, and planning in, in the era of, uh, of, of change, you know, is going to look differently all across Southeast Alaska. So we'd like to take it into consideration and look, um, you know, at, at communities one-on-one -on -one to see where we can, we can further help them with that sort of thing. Um, yeah, thank you. Really quick, just to add to that, as, as Marco said, you know, um, and as this relationship builds out with other tribes and other communities, you know, much of the priority areas will expand. And so right now we're seeing, you know, again, the early stages and early priorities right now. So you see four, but uh, in, in the coming months or coming years, we'll, we'll I'm sure to see uh, the priorities expand. Yeah, and on that, can you guys talk a little bit about some of the accomplishments? Thank you, thank you, thank you President Peterson. Yeah, a few accomplishments that we've had, um, to date, and we have the development of a charter, um, which we worked on, and it was um, it was it was a great collaborative effort. I think it reflected a time of really just healing. You know, having people come together, expressing what we want to see, um, working through things that 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 often come with setting a footprint like this. Um, this charter that we've developed. Um, We've developed it with a heart of sharing. We want this to be a voice for all tribal community members, all tribes of Southeast Alaska. Um, in doing so, we have um, shared it with others and asked for their feedback, and we've got feedback. Um, so that's one thing that I'm very proud of. We established steering committees, uh, first and foremost, with, with, the, with the folks you see here online. We, we called it the kind of the core group committee because this group is just to get the rubber on the road, just to get going. After, after we get this and we get walking, uh, we re really wanna concentrate on um, steering community that, that consists of, of people in, in, their, in their communities, um, bringing those people together to steer us in the right direction. Um, we've also hired um, Tia Silva, Tia Dola Silva, um, she's on as our environmental stewardship te uh, technician. She couldn't be on today. She wasn't feeling well, but I'd really like to give her props. She is um, a powerhouse in this. Um, I really, really admire her work and what she's done and what she continues to do. And she fills in that gap, um, that um, youth outreach gap that is going to be so, so important to this Guardians uh, network. Um, so I'd like to shout out to her and... Uh, also, we're just continuing this, this networking 
Um, and I, like I said before, I think that's something that's going to be um, uh, across the board in this development of this network. Yeah, great. I, I'm really glad that Marco, you mentioned Tia. She is a young powerhouse and that's exciting to see uh, our young people come up and she's really strong. I know give uh, kudos out to see Alaska too, because she's their youth rep on their board right now. And uh, I can only imagine she's offered quite a bit to them because she is a powerhouse. Uh, she's going to be a strong leader. She is a strong leader. So, can you guys talk a little bit about who are some of the current partners in the Indigenous Guardians Network? What communities are we working on with? Ray, do you want to go ahead and take that? Um, yeah, sure. As as Marco mentioned, and, and I'm going to kind of go back uh, a little bit to the 2018 Vancouver, British Columbia trip that we had, when we're really starting to get this um, this concept of the Guardians program going and, and kind of learning from the First Nations there. Uh, but Clink and Haida was at the table. Of course, Huna Inni Association, Bob Starbird, uh, Organized Village of Cake, um, Sea Alaska, uh, we didn't have the Forest Service at that time, but um, the Nature Conservancy, EcoTrust, and um, Spruce Root were there. Uh, and of course, as since 2018, the program has expanded a bit. Um, you'll see the Forest Service being a part. And we want to expand that out, not just to, again, to federal agencies, and we hope to get other federal agencies involved. But this is something we'd love to see the state of Alaska involved with as well. You know, just give us a chance to really have that, that co-management, co co-governance aspects, especially when it comes to our fisheries or other, other issues that the state is not sure that they trust the tribes on. But as we're building this program and building the capacity of our science, the Western science behind it and implementing the traditional knowledge, we hope to expand these partnerships out um, greater again um, with the state and hopefully uh, municipalities where partnerships where tribes can work with uh, their local municipal governments. Marco? Ray, I think you hit all the all the spots. Well, well, let me ask you, Marco, how does collaborating strengthen the management of our resources? Well, I think I think that's um, probably the most important point in 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 our resources and, and how we come to to manage them. Um, every every time I I I, I um, you know, um, I'm writing something or, or have the Indigenous Guardians work in front of me. I'm always focusing on, on traditional values. Um, and, and one of them is to lift each other up and support, right? So <clears throat> I think as we come together and, and this network is built and continues to, to build, you know, each other up, we strengthen ourselves and, and that's, that's where the power lies. Well, and I'm glad we have Joe here. Can, Joe, can you talk a little bit about how Sea Alaska is involved? Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks, President Peterson. The uh, you know Sea Alaska's role in this specific thing right here is to support, to help in any way we can, uh, knowing that we have a bunch of other work happening in many other different areas that are interrelated. So I think there's a level of coordination that we can come to the table and help with uh, uh, among any number of other things, but it's largely being run through Spruce Root, uh, Spruce Root being just a core part of our Sea Alaska family. And then see as Spruce Root uh, with Ralph's leadership here being the core person in the Sustainable Southeast Partnership. Um, but, but another key thing on this, I think is just, um, you know, folks are aware of Clink and Haida. They're aware of Sea Alaska. Uh, I feel like when Clink and Haida and Sea Alaska show up together, that's gonna, you know, that's always gonna help in generally. And uh, we, through ANCSA, only retained fee simple title to less than 2%, less than 2% of the Tongas here. But the reality is all of these public lands are native lands. And it's because you know we're we're not going anywhere. We're still we're still here. Things have happened, but we're still here. Uh, and to hear even just in this little bit, um, uh, this this lunch hour with U.S. Forest Service 
uh, you know, Mike's talking about trust and then, and then Jennifer speaking in terms of we and us. Well, when Jennifer's speaking that, I'm intuitively thinking, well, we and us and just us, because she's one of us, <laughs> you know, literally. Um, but she's referring to the U.S. Forest Service as work, as being us. Uh, so these paradigm shifts are, are uh, incredible. Uh, and I, I'm feeling like there's um, so much more that can happen uh, and, and such a snowball effect uh, in a good way that can can. Uh, I won't say rubber meeting the road here. I'll use the, the paddles, you know, um, hitting the water there uh, that we can go so much farther, so much faster um, when we get more of our smaller tribes right in this mix with us. Cause it's not about us. The core word on this word in this whole thing is network. We're not coming in to create this, to tell anybody what to do or how to do it necessarily. Well, we're here to help um, create a network that, that really is a, uh, not just a two-way street, it's multiple ways of information flow, and it is going to be driven by our, our, our tribal leaders. So this is just exciting for, for, for us. Uh, and people have tracked, you know, I think the, the sea loss has a little bit of shift. We're not doing industrial scale timber anymore. We're, we're, we're building out other frameworks, and when we're trying to re-engineer and have others help us do it. Our, our village economies so that more people can come back home, stay home and have meaningful jobs, including getting out on the land and water, um, just staying, taking care of, taking care of our homelands. You know, Joe, I'm, I'm so glad to have you here, uh, not just today and a part of this discussion, but, you know, as part of the solution, I, I, I never understand, I, I hear all the time, how we shouldn't be working together, tribes and corporations. And that, that makes no sense to me. We're the same people. We all should have the same desire to, you know, protect our resources, to utilize our resources, to hold each other up. And, you know, you and I have been a part of trying to put together some work with First Alaskans on what they call being good relatives. And we've really embraced, I think, the idea that when we fight each other, somebody else wins and we lose, you know? And uh, so I, I just wanna extend my personal appreciation to you for being a true leader in this effort of working together and, and stewarding our lands the way we should be. And, you know, we're not perfect and we can't wait for perfect to start, right? We, we've got to start now. And, you know, anybody who knows me and in my history of leadership, I've never been a fan of the Forest Service when I was younger because they had a history that went back decades and decades. Uh, but we also got to apply that same logic there. We, we have to work together. We share this space. And I'm really proud to say right now with the Forest Service, we find not just willing partners, but I think uh, very engaged in and excited partners. And we have to put past arguments aside, past history aside and move together for a stronger uh, Southeast. And so I'm, I'm really proud to see where, where it's going. And, um, you know, I guess one of the things I would ask is where are we, are we looking for more partners are, um, and for guardians to join this network? That is, that is absolutely correct, President Peterson. We're um, actively seeking and, and we want I just want to talk to, to folks out there right now, you know, if, if this is something that interests you, if this is something that's deep in your heart, you know, there's my contact information. Um, please feel free to drop me an email. Um, you know, and this, this network, I know you see a lot of entities up here, you know, um, but I think at the core of this, it belongs to the people. So that's really what I'd uh, like to stress is, is you know, if, you, if you'd like to get in contact with me, please feel free to. Thank you. Thanks. You know, that really concludes our, our canned questions and we're getting questions from our uh, Facebook Live audience. One uh, from Janice Nikolai Katast Erford. Uh, she has a concern over our forests and waters being used for dumping grounds of garbage and tires other other stuff. How can this network address this problem? 
Ray, do you have? Sure. Um, well, you know, I think part of it goes back to education um, to the communities. Um, there's there has to be some sense of responsibility when it comes to dumping and things of that nature. But uh, again, part of this group again is to have that stewardship aspect to where we can help clean up. Um, you know, the first part of it is uh, we we would always hope that you don't litter or don't dump in that regards. But if so, you know, um, the priorities will come across through through the governing structure that we create as as a group to determine how to address that. So um, again, you know, right now we don't have that listed out, but once we get the bigger group, those are the kinds of priorities that we hope to do um, to address those problems. I hope that makes sense. Sure. Uh, from Edward Hill, are you helping Sitka tribe with the herring season? Um, kind of a separate question from this group, but I'll go ahead and answer that both Clinton Haida and Sea Alaska have joined in uh, with Sitka tribe of Alaska on their lawsuit on, on herring, and we've supported that. And right now the Board of Fish is meeting on Southeast Alaska issues in Anchorage, which I, the reasoning was uh, COVID and they were concerned about COVID, but Anchorage numbers have been higher than everybody else. So I think that was a, I'm just going to say it, forgive me. I think it was a BS strategy to move it out of our region to try to limit our participation. But I can tell you uh, that didn't work because we're up there in force in Anchorage. In fact, Ralph is joining us today from Anchorage, where he has a Vice President Clinton Haida, Vice President Rob Sanderson, and Vice President Delbert Kadek uh, went up to te provide testimony. I seen tribal leaders from Sitka, Ketchikan, Kassan, and others going up to testify. Um, you know, we're, we can't limit us. We we made our written comments, and we're going to continue to advocate for our way of life. You can change the uh, the the game board, but we're gonna go with it, and we play the game as better as anybody else. So I'm a little bit ticked off on that whole issue. So sorry if you hear my vigor a little bit, um, but yeah, we're there. Uh, from Amy Williams, what information do you have on pollution that comes from cruise ships coming through our waters? Are there effects on whales from nail noise pollution? How can we be more clean and respectful to water and land by disposing of this in safer ways than dumping into areas? Um, I don't know that this is uh, what Guardians is working on. Maybe it is, and I, I don't know. But I can tell you many of us are, are like our native lands and resources, Ray. We are working on that issue where we meet with the EPA, we meet with other agencies, we're concerned about um, discharge from uh, wastewater. We're, we're concerned about air pollution. And we are working on those issues right now. In fact, right now, we should, we really need to get the word out and have people um, providing comments to the state government because they're trying to eliminate the um, Sea Rangers program. And that's a very important program. One that provides some monitoring of the cruise ships. And so we're, we're providing comments. If uh, citizens and others uh, are concerned about this, um, they should reach out to us. We can provide comments, uh, template talking points that you may want to consider. Um, and I know other communities are incredibly concerned about this issue. Uh, from Marge Tatsi, how much do septic tanks affect local waters? Um, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know if anybody on here does. That's a great question. I know being a former, former mayor in a community, our outfall systems and everything have to comply and it's based on uh, how much you can put into the ocean based on population. So. It really, I think in the bigger communities, we should be really concerned. Uh, I, my personal hunch is catch cans had some real fecal matter issues in their waters for some time. And I don't think it's the cruise ships because 
when the cruise ships weren't here in the pandemic, we still had those high fecal matters. So I, ha I have a suspicion it's a lot more to do with our outfall systems and probably antiquated uh, systems that aren't treating it uh, effectively. I may be just stirring a huge uh, nest there. So I don't know, but that's my suspicion. And I think that we need to be taking a closer look at it. There was also a question about where we were at with the Canadian mines. And we work very strongly on transboundary mining issues. Um, Southeast uh, has a, a group of tribes working together on that issue. We work uh, with some of the conservation groups on that as well. And it's a huge concern. We work very closely with our um, congressional delegation and the state. And uh, we're trying to make some inroads with the Canadian government on that. Because unfortunately, not only are those mines based on the Canadian side of the border, they don't create jobs or opportunity for Americans really. And they really do just dump right into our waters. So it is a huge issue, one that we're, um, we are very, very engaged on. And I think it's probably comes up at every one of these groups from SSP to Seacoast and, and with us. So we're very engaged in that. And then last question from Janice Nikolai Katast Erfurt. Does the network collaborate with the EPA? Ray? Not yet. Um, that's something that we're hoping to work on as well. I, I currently sit on the, uh, the Region 10 Tribal Operations Committee, the RTOC which is a representation of tribes from Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Alaska that meets with the EPA um, on a regional level. And they're very much aware of uh, the guardians and um, we've been presenting to them about it. And um, you know, this is definitely something that they're, they're looking into. And it's something I think that we're gonna have to look into as well as, as our relationship with the Forest Service grows. You know, This could be a platform or a template for other agencies to use as we send that invite. Um, one thing I wanted to add in, in regards to uh, the Guardians is with the Ocean Rangers program depleting from the state, you know, this is prime opportunity for the Guardians program to really step up and hopefully, you know, take some, take some of that where the state's dropping off those things. Hopefully that's something that we can look to pick up in the future as we develop our program and, and, and our resources. So just putting that out there. Thank you for that, Ray. Um, that really concludes today's program. I just want to thank all of our panelists for joining us today and sharing. This really truly is based on a partnership. And so, you know, just reiterate how important it is that uh, this between the Forest Service and Clinket and Haida is just the start, but it's about building that, um, you know, through our villages and village corporations. And so thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mike, for being here, Jennifer. Uh, Ray, did you want to say anything about Guardian uh, gatherings before we sign off? Yeah, I, I'll leave that to, to Mark to do. We have a monthly Guardian gathering. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Ray. Um, yeah, so every month on the last Wednesday of every month, we have what we like to call a Guardian's gathering. And this is basically a commune of um, all Southeast um, tribal environmental departments and community members um, who want to come into a safe place and, and, and talk about um, what uh, stewardship, indigenous-led stewardship looks like in their area. Um, it usually lasts a couple hours. Uh, the conversation can go on much longer, um, but that's something that we put together um, as a form of, of networking also. Right. Well, again, thank you all for tuning in today. Today we did have door prize winners uh, for our David Boxley Form Line t-shirts. And first winner is Frank Cato. And the next is Mary Catherine Martin. And if you will message us your addresses, we'll get those mailed out to you right away. Hope to see everybody at our next lunchtime chat, which I think is for March 17th. And again, thank you all to the panel and to everybody who tuned in. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.